Hello and welcome to this discussion's interview at the APV Awards 2023. I hope you guys are having a good time because I am. I am Tico, the creative partner at APVA. I'm a voiceover artist and a podcaster, and I'm glad to be the host of this session. Where we'll be looking at the topic representation and diversity in the podcasting industry. Podcasting has become a powerful medium for storytelling and sharing diverse voices and perspectives. However, there are still challenges when it comes to representation and inclusivity in the industry. Hence, in this session, we will examine the importance and impact of diverse voices and stories, explore the barriers that exist, and discuss strategies and initiatives aimed at creating a more inclusive podcast landscape. Our esteemed guest who is joining me for this session is a podcaster, a communication expert, and the CEO of Content is Queen, a UK-based podcast marketing PR agency helping brands, organizations, and independent podcasters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome with me, Imrel Morgan. Hello, Imrel. Hello. Nice to be here. Thank you for having me. It's nice to be here. Yeah, it's nice to be here with you too. And um, I hope you're enjoying APVA's second um, award edition, the ABVA Awards, um, Voices of the Future. I mean, it's it's been it's been fun. It's been amazing, and we're continuing in this session. Yeah, the topic again is representation and diversity in the podcast in industry, and I can't wait to hear you share your thoughts with us about okay. representation. So let's start with defining representation and diversity in the context, context of podcasting. What the, what, what, how would you define representation and diversity? Um, so I think when thinking about this, I think of them as two, they're two different things. They're, they're related, but they're different. So when I think about the concept of representation, we're talking about who we see or what we hear, who we see and hear actually. Um, and that should be reflective of the audiences consuming the content. Um, and then diversity is about the experiences of those people. So the backgrounds of the people that make up the industry at a larger scale, but also the people that make up the production on a smaller scale. Um, so diversity does go beyond what you look like, the physical and visual characteristics that we can identify and see about a person. But instead it's looking at the class, the education, uh, the neurodiversity, their disability status, their sexual orientation, all of the things that kind of make up an individual. Um, and their various identities and what those things can then bring to the table. Um, in the context of podcasting, it's like what can those lived experiences contribute to bigger discussions um, within news or politics or um, the climate, for example. So it's really about like the diversity is more than what we see. It's more about who that person is and all of the different individual things they bring to the table. Whereas representation is I see you, you see me, I hear you, you, mm. you hear me, but is that enough? <laughs> Especially if we are mm. the same person or we're similar people um, with similar backgrounds. It's not, it's, it's, it's a little bit deeper. Interesting. So from what you're saying now, I can deduce that um, representation, of course, is having different people represented. And um, for instance, in Africa, in the podcasting landscape, different countries have people who are doing podcasts. So it's okay to say that they're all representing their countries, but diversity is deeper than that. And now it seems to me like from what you've said, we may say that we have the rep responsibility to ensure a level of diversity in our podcasts. Uh, let's talk about diversity then. What is the importance or how important it, is it for podcasters to ensure that diversity is priority or is prioritized in, you know, their podcasting endeavor? Um, I think, uh, I think it depends on the podcaster, right? So uh, in the context of historically marginalized groups, the onus, um, or the, the burden of that work tends to fall on the marginalized to improve the situation. I think actually when we're on an individual level, for example, I think about disability status, I think about what is the person on the other end going to experience when they're consuming my content. So when as a podcaster, on a, as an individual indie podcaster, I think it's important to think about your listeners and who they are at the other end and actually how can you broaden out your audience and grow your audience by thinking about the diversity of experiences that on the other side. If you're just a one-man band, you can only do so much. <laughs> it's already a lot to create 
publish uh, and produce a podcast um mm. on a larger scale certainly um when you're thinking about the landscape of maybe yeah, even african podcasting or black podcasting as uh, within the diaspora um so something we have to we have to think about is the diversity of our content um and the diversity of the guests that we bring onto that content um so i don't know if it's always is i don't know that we necessarily have to prioritize it in the same ways that we're kind of demanding of the wider industry that we we sit in but it is something to think about and i think often we are thinking about it probably more than we need to um given given the context that we kind of exist in and the world we exist in um but it is it is something that we should all be thinking about but certainly um as diverse podcasters there are so there's like so many people that can't access podcasts um mm. from people that don't have like the financial means to access data right through to people that just cannot hear like they have difficulty hearing um to how mm. you make your content and your message and your bigger story more accessible across the board so it is something to think about because we are missing out huge swaths of the um huge swaths of audiences that could be tapping into that key message and tapping into the story that you want to tell through audio oh interesting and um i'm learning a lot from what you're saying because i'm you know reaching you from nigeria in africa and you're there in the uk and i think mm -hmm. um diversity and representation slightly mean different things to us not because um they don't mean you know what they mean as you've dis defined it but from the place of um responsibility now for you guys over there i mean the diaspora and podcasters you you understand that you should or you want to reach a larger audience like people from africa and um, different continents and all of that from the african perspective now a lot of us are still trying to, you know, do stuff that affect our um, locality and, you know, by extension, in the Western world. So it's sort of like representation and diversity. The the bulk of that weight <laughs> of that responsibility tend to lie on um, podcasters that are diaspora and podcasters, right? Uh, but now let's talk about the how. Because you mentioned that it could be very difficult for an indie podcaster to ensure diversity, right? Um, what tips would you recommend for indie podcasters that they feel like, okay, I, I want to be, I want to represent other people uh, and or I want other people to be represented and I want this level of diversity so people can feel, uh, my, 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 my audience can feel they're part of my podcast. Um, I think the fact that the if you're at that point where you're asking the question, right? So the first step is asking yourself the question is like, who is not in the room? Who is not listening? Who is missing from the conversation? Um, and I think we can all ask ourselves those questions. I ask myself those questions all the time as an event curator, as a, you guys are creating on awards. Who's not there? Who's not? Who's underrepresented? Who's missing from this conversation? Um, and, and being quite specific internally about kind of listing out who's missing um, and then finding the people that are speaking about these issues or complementary issues and then you can start bringing those people into the conversations you're having on your podcast so if you're speaking about I don't know golf um, I don't know why golf becomes my go-to example but if you're speaking about golf who's not in that conversation like, like, women tend to be missing from conversations about golf uh, disabled people tend to be missing about conversations about uh, and people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds for example so you can start to really see okay I've got like one group here so who else is not here and who am I in the conversation am I part of this group or am I in the out group um, and you can start to then go and seek out the voices that are missing because they're there it's not like there's no um it's not like they don't exist it's more that they're just not amplified or given a platform so i think when we're talking about podcasters willing to do more it can be as simple as just asking yourself the question and that question will lead to answers that get you the diversity that you're seeking within the content that you're trying to produce the other side of that is okay who do i want to be consuming this content that can't consume this content uh what's the big message that i want to share and if it's you know um i would like more people in my local area to know about these businesses that i'm prom promoting through the podcast or i'm speaking to local entrepreneurs and i think everyone should know about their work who do you want to be listening and who would benefit from these local entrepreneurs work or uh, innovation then it's a case of okay 
back going back and thinking okay well they might not press play on my podcast they might not even know my podcast exists but how else what do they know exists instagram um or twitter or whatever social media platform they hang out linkedin even so it's a case of like how do you take the content that you're creating um you're producing and dropping it into as many different places and also re- always referencing back to the fact that there is a podcast for wider learning um more research more deep diving is in the podcast but here are the different ways that people can consume the message that you're sharing mm, mm, that, that's um that's a deep one now you talked about trying to figure out which um people aren't represented or the aspects where there is a lack of diversity. And, you know, it suggests to me that there is a need for collaboration and partnerships as well. So I'm Mm -hmm. saying how important would you say podcasters should consider collaborations and partnerships in order to, you know, ensure there is diversity and representation in their podcasts? I mean, collaboration is just like the heart of podcasting, right? So the way to the one of the most effective ways to grow is to use other podcasts and podcasters to get in front of their audiences and vice versa. I think collaboration is essential to the survival of most podcasts and podcasters kind of life within the industry. Um, It's. It is it's an essential part. So from swapping shows to guesting on each other's shows right through to taking recommendations, maybe someone who has pitched to your show is not a good fit, but actually because you're tapped into the industry or you're tapped into your kind of immediate network of other shows, you're like, actually, you'd be really, really great on this show. This person would be a great guest for you. Or I spoke to X person and I think your audience would really benefit from hearing the messages here. So I think it is almost essential um not only to the survival of podcasters but certainly to the growth and um the upward trajectory of what a podcast can do is we have to work with each other we have to rely on people to come and contribute their ideas and their expertise um so that the audience benefits in the long term mm, all right um just before we go i have about it, a question or two to ask you and now okay. we're talking about collaboration we're talking about representation yeah. we're talking about diversity um these are good but then sometimes if not managed properly they can come with um, touching controversial or sensitive topics you know that are related to representation so um from an expert's point of view (laughs) you know how do you advise podcasters to navigate such challenges you know when it comes to backlash in addressing sensitive issues oh i mean that is not an easy question um (laughs) it's also not an uh there's not a cheap solution to that problem either i think with podcasting it's kind of the it's been dubbed the wild west of being able to kind of say what you want um for people to kind of be free and people often are free with their words because the medium is just so intimate and so it's so easy to yeah just kind of feel comfortable saying what you want to say and and i think what often happens is people say things that they don't intend to or people say things that could be triggering to other people or insensitive um, or confidential um, and or involve other people and really it is a case of really being quite clear if you're entering podcasting and you're going to be talking about rumors gossips um any kind anything that is sensitive in nature is having a really good understanding of media law or me- having some media literacy and there are organizations um from Air media to audio uk is a- another good resource um the podcast support group on facebook loads of those places have pretty good resources or people that can point you in the right direction of what to do if an interviewee or a guest has said something controversial so i think it's really hard to be honest like if you are worried about something that has been said on your podcast I would, if you can't afford a lawyer and you can't afford someone to review it, um, and as someone that has worked on the commissioning side, you do need to, we need to have lawyers on everything we put out. If you can't afford to do that, I would say err on the side of caution and do not put that content out, just remove that bit. Having said that, I know that for big traumatic subjects that might be the nature of your podcast, grief, sexual assault, et cetera, et cetera. And it's just being really mindful about naming people naming organizations naming and shaming is something that you have to be really really careful about because defamation and libel is a thing so i think yes share those stories but also keep in the back of your mind like this is still going out into the world and 
think about the damage and the triggers that you could be kind of just think mm. about it holistically like there is more to then just getting a story and having a controversial moment that everyone clicks on um mm. because if you're at the end of the day you're responsible for what you publish and put out into this world mm. wow wow that that's um, interesting all right before we go now um uh, first of all let me say congratulations on the c- season six of your podcast which Thank is you. um wannabe uh, you're doing a great job and um of course i understand that you do what you can to ensure there is representation and diversity. So just in less than a minute now, we could talk about your podcast and how you've been able to, you know, get it going with representation, diversity, and doing this for six seasons now. And, you know, with that, will you be giving us your parting words to give one or two words of advice to podcasters in Africa? Oh yeah. gosh, that's a lot to get done in a minute. Okay, so um, <laughs> yeah. so want to be focuses on the careers, the creative and entertainment careers of women, and particularly women of color. Um, so it's every episode is thirty minutes or less, and I try to look at who is again who's missing from bigger conversations around sport, entertainment, um, the creative industries. Um, so season six is about women in sports, predominantly, um, and so for me, I think about. Who's not in the conversations? Again, that question, like who's not having these conversations? Who's not represented? How do I ensure that there's a diverse mix of women? So sometimes that is on the representation side. That is like, have I got an Asian woman this season? Have I got a black woman? Have I got a white? Like, have I got like different types of women represented within the podcast? Because that's my audience. Um, with Content is green more generally. We focus on diversity and inclusion at equity at, at the baseline. That is what we do. We believe it is a process and not an outcome. Um, and we have won awards for that work. Um, in this time, I have published an open letter to the industry calling for more accountability and transparency around their DE&I funding, around what they are actually doing to support uh, creators from underrepresented backgrounds. So this is now become my lifeblood um, and the work that I intend to kind of continue doing uh, because it is important. This industry literally does not survive without us. Um, my kind of parting tips or advice for African podcasters, I don't think that I ha- I think my tip is that I don't have anything that you don't already know. You like you have the content, you have your stories, um, and increasingly you've got access to the exact same tech that we all have to kind of put these stories out into the world. Um, continue doing that work. Um, it is not going unnoticed. People are seeing the innovation and the diversity of the storytelling that's coming from within the continent. Um, there's nothing that we can tell you and don't let us from the West, quote unquote, or from the diaspora, tell you anything, you guys have got this um, and you're only going to grow and carry on being successful. So, I mean, if if there is a tip in that, it is to keep going, keep creating, um, doing the very best you can, keep iterating and learning. And I have no doubt that we're going to see some really amazing things coming out of Africa. Honestly, I'm very mm. excited. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emeril. So that's it on this um uh, that's it on this discussion session and ladies and gentlemen just listen to Imrel talk about representation and diversity in the podcasting industry she is the host of wannabe podcast and she is the ceo of content is queen a uk-based podcast marketing and pr agency helping brands organizations and independent podcasters once again thank you very much Imrel, for joining us no and now thank you Yeah, we get back to the rest of the ABVA 2023 awards. 